Hey guys, it's Nicole, and today I will be sharing a layout from the Super Savers portion of my August 2013 Super Sketch Club kit. Again, these are from Scrapbook Generation, and it's basically a kit that they provide you with papers, sketches, instructions to make five double page layouts. And uh, this particular kit, again, August 2013, so it's two years old at this point. Um, I only have one of the layouts paired up with photos. Uh, normally I like to work on the kits if I've matched up at least two or three layouts worth. This was just sort of, I'm just trying to knock out as many kits as I have managed to match up photos with and then I can sort of regroup everything, do another sort of long sit down, match up photos, send them out to print, and do another big batch of uh, layouts. And this is just sort of how I tend to work. I don't really, like when my kit comes that month, I don't immediately work on it. I don't match up all five layouts. That's just not how my brain sort of works. I tend to just kind of jump around between different kits, sort of either what, what I've either already picked photos for or what I'm in the mood to work on. And that's kind of the same for my scrapbooking outside of these kits. I don't scrap chronologically. I just kind of pick and choose what I want to work on. I do store my layouts chronologically though. Um, so this was just one. I had matched up photos to one of the super savers so I decided I'm gonna put gonna go ahead and put it together. And since it is a super saver, I like to sit down and cut apart all of the papers that go to all three super saver layouts at one time. It just makes it easier for me to figure out, um, you know, which papers, which parts and pieces go on each of the three layouts. And this one I thought was kind of interesting just because normally we get six sheets of cardstock that are all the same color, and this one they had three different colors. So one layout has gray background, one has this pretty light blue, and one has the white cardstock. So I thought that was kind of different. Um, they could have done this in some of the newer kits, but like I said, I cherry pick and kind of just work on different things. So there could be some kits in my backlog that they've mixed up the background papers in that as well. And this particular layout is sort of when my my cutting blade on my stamping up trimmer, trimmer just flat out died and I was so annoyed because I kept at it, I kept trying to work with it and it was just fraying my papers. So right now I'm inking the edges of everything that I've cut so far and I'm rubbing that ink blending tool really good into to the edges to kind of smooth or burnish all that frayed paper. Um, I was really kicking myself for not having a, a spare blade and in the back of my mind I was trying to remember how long I've had this trimmer and I feel like I've had this trimmer a long time for that one blade especially when you when you think about um, when I do kits at my local store I have to have everything pre-cut in the kit so there's a lot of um, trimming photo mats and trimming, you know, straight cuts on my trimmer. So I was impressed with how long that blade lasted, but now I know better. Thanks to my mother-in-law, I now have four and she's going to kind of keep keep ordering me some here and there so that I don't have to run out again. Um, while all this was going on, I was kind of in the middle of this big push to get through some of these kits and I remembered that when she bought me the trimmer, she had gotten me the rotary blade attachment as well because at the time I preferred rotary trimmers. Unfortunately, all the ones that I had, they just did not cut straight. They were all sort of a little bit crooked. Uh, but when I got the stamping up one, I left the, the plain blade on there and the first couple times I tried it, I was like, oh my gosh, I love this trimmer. So I never tried the rotary trimmer. So when my blade went bad and I just was sort of in this big push to do all these kits, I switched it out to this rotary blade. And here I am trying like heck to figure out where this thing is going to cut. I should have tested it on some scratch paper. 
and I'm trying to do what I do on a lot of these layouts where if if by the time I've got my photos lined out and my background papers lined out if there is a small gap where everything wasn't exactly 12 inches I take my trimmer and I slice off the top of my layout oh boy this rotary trimmer does not cut straight like the plastic guide that you hold everything down on sort of bends back and forth so you can actually get sort of like a wavy cut if you're not careful and I tried to cut off the top of my layout and I basically just gouged chunks out of the top of this layout so now I'm gonna have to go back and just kind of cut off you know not quite a quarter of an inch off the top of both pages um, I don't think it's gonna be noticeable when it's in my page protector but I was having a hard time with that rotary trimmer. I got to the point where I sort of had to hold the paper, hold the cutting guide, try not to wiggle anything and cut as slow as I possibly could with it. Luckily I only had to use it for about a week. I feel like I feel like it had a okay design wise, but the clear plastic track that the blade sort of goes up and down, for me, did not cut straight. It cut super wonky so I don't know there could be people out there that absolutely love the rotary blade and it may work for them for whatever reason the one that I have I was not a fan so when I got when I got my blade replacements I just went straight back to the regular cutting arm the regular cutting track flipped everything back and I'm a happy camper um, as far as everything that's been going on on the layout this one was pretty easy. You just have that big balloon pattern paper that you trim down to go on either side. Put my photos were all 4 by 6 photos. I believe, I'm not sure if I changed one of them to two 3 by 4s because I've got them overlapped right now. And then the kit and set of stickers this time came with uh, die cut packs. So I just pulled out the couple that went with this one and you're supposed to pop them up on pop dots and then they had the pattern paper that had some different um, like stripe strips in the pattern um, just following the cutting guide as far as what size those need to be trimmed down and cut into banners and then I'm just using this hexagon punch to do the end of the banners sometimes I think it's faster um, if I only have you know two or three banners to cut I'll just use my scissors or if it's like a bigger than that punch so if you've got like a two three four inch wide piece of paper I just use my scissors but and again I'm just usually I will follow the cutting guide off of the sketches I'll kind of read the notes that they've put underneath the sketch and then as far as putting the page together I prefer to reference their color photo than the sketch and that's just kind of how I've always I've always been if I if I go to a class at my local store I tend to use the sample for reference instead of what they've provided in the instructions I'm just more of a visual person and I believe everything on this one I inked in vintage photo which I've been using on pretty much everything lately sort of my go-to color and then I decided on this little blue arrow um, that I wanted to just kind of put a title on there later on I may go back and do some journaling strips and just kind of put you know which park we were at the date and um, that it was with our play group and and that you know we had gotten together and decided to do um, a bubble party for the kids where everybody just kind of brings different you know bubble machines those little guns with the fans on them and stuff and the kids just kind of I mean honestly they played with bubbles for like 10 minutes and then they were they were gone onto the playground um, for the title I just grabbed a bunch of different uh, alphabet stickers that I had and just kind of narrowed it down based on what I had that matched color wise and then I thought I could get two words bubble party to fit in there and these yellow ones are 
they're from Simple Stories, and I want to say it's the I Heart Summer line. There was a, a green one from Bella Boulevard that I really liked because it kind of helped pull out some of the greens on the background paper, but the letters were way too big, and I kind of wanted to keep it enclosed on that die cut. So I just kind of arranged those, and then once I had them where I needed them, I just kind of used the back of my fingernail to kind of burnish them on, because those those die cuts were really nice because they were actually like a textured cardstock. And then I had this extra photo that I wanted to go ahead and include, so I just trimmed it down to 3x4, and I grabbed some white cardstock, inked the edges, and I'm going to just go ahead and add this extra photo on to the layout. And it's usually pretty easy to go ahead and add extra photos to these kits. So there's a close-up of some of the die cuts that were in the pack, and you can see that they're textured. And then a close-up of where I had added those Simple Story stickers. And then another shot of the completed layout. So I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.